How's it going guys? I'm about to show you how to disconnect a radiator from out of a 2000 to a 2005 Chevy Impala. It doesn't matter if it's the 3.4 engine or the 3.8 engine. The first thing you would want to do when you're disconnecting your radiator is you'll have to remove your overflow valve which is right here. It'll be a little pipe that's on that that basically you'll disconnect. Of course, this right here is where you put your actual fluid in that. The next thing you'll have will be right here, which will be a transmission line that's going to be screwed into the radiator itself. I think it takes about maybe a size 15 or 16 wrench to do it. Then as you come down, it'll be another hose right here that you have to disconnect. This hose right here one end is going to run to the radiator. The other end of it will be connected onto the engine somewhere. I just disconnected the one from the engine because it was easier to get to versus trying to reach our way down and disconnect it from right here. Then below that line, what you're going to have is another transmission line that you have to screw off that's going to take the same size wrench at the one at the top. And to get to this transmission line, you probably need to go from up underneath the car with a wrench to remove that line from it. And then when you come over to the other side of the radiator, what you'll have on this side is another hose, pretty much just like the one that I showed you on the other side, another big black hose, rubber hose, that'll connect onto this. And normally to remove these hoses, just like the little squeeze clamps that you gotta squeeze together, and then you pull it off once you do that. And once you've done these things, the radiator should be free to actually come off of the car. Of course, there's gonna be a couple of mounts that's on top of the radiator itself. It'll be like two screws. Now, if you look kinda in the lip, two screws, one on this side, and it'll be like another one over on this side that you will release also. And also, there'll be electrical cord that's, this is your fan right here. What I'm touching now is an actual fan. So when you remove the stuff, you'll actually be taking the fan and the radiator off at the same time. I'm gonna show you also how to remove the fan from the radiator. But before you can remove the fan and the radiator combo, you also need to unplug the electrical connections. That's going to be one plugged into here and another one plugged in right here. And once you get that done, it's going to be electrical wire that runs through the radiator, through the fan, through these little harnesses right here. There's one, then you'll have another one right here, and then you'll have another one over here. To open those, just take a flathead screwdriver and you pretty much just pop the side of it open. I'll show you a better view of this one so you can see how to pop them open. See that's what they're going to look like. And all you want to do is come around to the other side and as you can see inside of there you just take you a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver right in that little corner and just pop that open it'll make it open up like this and that way you can disconnect that wire harness that pretty much goes and plug into your fans itself now if you need to disconnect the fan itself which is what this is on the back from your radiator what you need to do is there's two screws there's one that's going to be right here you want to take this one off and then you have one on the other side of the radiator right here and you take that one off. Once you remove those two screws off of it, and you also, of course, you want to remove the mounts at the top, the fan itself should basically disconnect from the radiator, and just in case you need to actually change the fan, but you don't need to change your radiator. Once again, guys, this is how you would disconnect the connections that hold your radiator on to your car. All right, thanks. 